Happy Monday, everybody. Yo! We're going to start here with the Weird Things Podcast in just a few minutes. How's every, how was everybody's weekend? Uh, uh, it's, it's really weird when, like, you work really hard for a long time and you're like, you know what I'd like is, is, is a couple of days of doing nothing. And then by the end of the second day, you're like, good God, I need something to be doing. <laughs> it's weird how your brain gets, I don't know, it's like it's conditioned to do stuff and you're like, oh, I need a break. I, and you think that you, it's like, it's like you, when you're hungry, I'm like, I need to go to the buffet and eat everything. And then you get a couple items like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm um done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. I, I love that the cut back and forth like mm, yeah, good. <laughs> mm, it, was the, it felt like like everything is terrible or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not what I want. I want my notes. So I hear there's some new podcast out. Have you heard about this, Brian? It's about like cons and swindles and stuff. It's oh, getting man. a lot of buzz. Dude, uh, uh, Jason and Brian in the chat saying nice things. Um, it's it's very intimidating to, and and I'm sure every every time you put out a book, you experience a similar thing. But it's like once it's it's out and it's gone and and you don't get to touch it and it's however anybody wants to see it. Um, it's terrifying and. Uh, so uh, to to hear people say nice things is is quite, uh, it means a lot. Thank you very much, Jason. Yeah. Yeah, I heard uh, the Rock is going to be in the movie. Is that right? The Rock and uh, Ryan Reynolds. I believe Ryan Reynolds is. Have you not heard about this? I know there's a movie coming down the road um, that. I've intentionally tried to know nothing about for fear of it affecting my and Justin's project in any way. Oh, okay. Okay, I will say it. Uh, Gal Gadot apparently is in that too. Um, uh, hello, everybody. But yeah, uh, greatest, what is it? World's greatest con podcast.com? Greatest uh, con podcast.com? That's correct. Yeah. Both of those are correct. Wait, uh, one of those. Both of them. Both of them. So you will find your way there. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I, had a, I, had a, I had a nice weekend as well. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's like, uh, do I want to hear about the movie? No, I really don't. Do I want to hear about the fact that the Stuff You Should Know podcast randomly decided that this was the week to rerun their Operation Mincemeat episode? Kind of don't. Like, no, none of those things bring me joy. Uh, <laughs> the, the thing I'm talking about is not the, a Mincemeat movie. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Ryan Reynolds will play the role of quote the world's greatest con dash man uh, as Rock the Rock plays an Interpol agent and it was a funny thing in the Discord earlier today. I see. Uh, in the press. Uh, also, there's a there's a movie uh, based on Operation Mincemeat just around the corner that uh, apparently we just made it under the wire. So it sounds like they're copying you. Uh, sure. I'm just busting your balls. It's uh, fine. Okay. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, uh, yeah. It, it, All right, but it's fine. We can move on. Hello, everybody. Everybody call your dads yesterday? I everybody did. call your dads yesterday? Went and saw my dad. Mm. Oh, don't! Oh, yeah, sorry. Called, called my dad. <laughs> my, uh, my, my, uh, my dad's birthday um, and my birthday are very close, and um, and so his birthday usually falls on on Father's Day or the day after Father's Day, which is what it is today, um, or this year, I guess. And and so uh, today is your dad's birthday. Uh, it is. It is. Happy also, it is. birthday! Yeah. But it's it's always it's always one of those like your birthday is right next to Christmas things where I don't know how many gifts to send him. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he doesn't care, but. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to get a card. That's the most I'll expect. Um, this, uh, 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 this year, I got a particularly good Father's Day gift from Penny because uh, I've been watching a whole bunch of these uh, organic pool videos, and I figured out that uh, the crappier the video production quality, the more I trust them because that means that they're good <laughs> at making organic pools and not videos. And uh, Penny sent me the most delightful 10 minute long clip art laden poorly edited video 
that's all about uh, how to throw a rocket to a pond. <laughs> <laughs> and she went out to the to the neighborhood pond. It was uh, it was really great. Oh, that's nice. awesome. I, believe my... I like my attitude on scientists. I'm a little bit skeptical of ones that are really good at talking on camera and sound points and sound bites. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hmm, are they, they, I don't know if they're spending too much like... time in the lab or at the ground latency. You know, I'm a little worried here. <laughs> It's like, well, that was so well put, you're able to fit it into 12 syllables. I'm betting not many award-winning papers are summarized in 12 <laughs> syllables. Yeah. yeah, it's cause like there are two contradictory quotes from Feynman. One is about like, uh, I mean, if you can't explain it, then you don't understand it. But then they asked him to explain something, and he says, "That's why I got the Nobel or something." It's like, <laughs> like I right, pick a lane, dude. Uh, I I also believe that Feynman would recognize the irony of of, oh, of all of that. Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. All right, I believe I'm ready to start the Weird Things Show. Are you guys ready? Ready, ready. All right, Andrew, I'm gonna count you in. In. Three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Gentlemen, I'm yeah. a little worried about Japan. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. You think they're, they're secretly giving up their democratic ways, that they've got a shadow emperor who's ready to, to, to start a sneak attack invasion? Oui. You know, Brian... Perhaps we are seeing signs of that. Maybe Wait. your crazy hyperbole filled rejoinder there is more based in fact than you suspect. Well, I know there's been a there's been uh, over the past decade or so a push to remilitarize Japan uh, in inside the Japanese political environment. Is is that is that what we're talking about? Maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna use sort of a historical reference: the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Of course, what was the <laughs> premise of that? What, what was the premise of that? Like, what was every episode about? Uh, uh, how cheap can we license this generic <laughs> kung fu footage, and how do we remap it with a bunch of very white Americans? <laughs> yeah. So how, how do we get young kids to beat up monsters and and an and an older woman every week? <laughs> so, like, every week was was it Angel Falls. What was the city? Was uh, they basically got attacked by a monster? Okay. Right. Japan, we keep hearing about they've been having some attacks. They're having some attacks. Attacks? Been a, they've been getting attacked a bit. Mm. Mm. Are they sea creatures? No, not sea creatures. Not this time, huh? Not this time. Not this time. Mm. Is it a big I mean, moth? I can't rule Is out it a big entire... moth like creature? Is it a fever for K pop? <laughs> They're crazy for it. Well, they you know, it's not a J-pop, so they get other K-pop. You know, it's just actually, um, yes. <laughs> it's, yeah, 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 yeah. True story. Uh, so uh, the latest is uh, there has been an attack on a Japanese military base. Wait, like 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 a full on for reals attack? Whoa! I mean, four people were injured. Uh, okay. that, I mean, <laughs> I like, I do like, like, that's like a hard right turn <laughs> where it makes me like almost worried, but then it's like, oh, we're in the safe lane. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it to the people. Now, um, now, an attack on a base, I mean, that is as national ground. That could be uh, grounds for a war. Are we, are you saying we might, so the Japan okay, could be headed okay, to war? Okay. I, I figured it out. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Andrew, Andrew. Uh, if if you don't mind kind of staring at the camera, I want you to look left. If the attackers had no legs, look right. If the attackers had six legs or more. <laughs> oh, he's looking oh, he's up. Looking up. Oh. oh. Okay. Interesting. Huh. huh. Does that mean that they're 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 cyber legs or human legs? I guess that would probably be two. Yeah, I was gonna I mean, yeah you did kind of have a pretty good margin in between those two options there. Yeah. Mm. So if people are injured, only, only four people got injured on a base. I mean... It's a military base. On a military base, right? Security. They had to call out helicopters. 
It's and it's a growing problem. Is the uh, now now Andrew? Uh, I don't. I'm not used to all different foreign bases. At this particular base, is the floor lava? No. Mm, okay. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's that. <laughs> that almost pivoted really quick. <laughs> Um, uh, and, and, and this is on mainland China, right? Japan. Aha, good. You didn't fall for my trap. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was in, uh, Sapporo, which we know for the beer, yep. which is, uh, I believe that's in the, that might, might, might be one of the islands. Uh, it is in Hokkaido, yeah. which is the Northern, yeah, island, Northern island of Japan. Island. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so kind of it's a it's a little more rustic. It's a little more rural up uh, in Hokkaido. Uh, now, uh, now, you you nature. Ca- you casually mentioned the beer, and you're not wrong. That is how I know uh, uh, Sapporo is, is is from the beer. Does uh, but but it was a military base, uh, and this was not a beer related attack. <laughs> not beer related. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Was it was oh it, was oh it? my gosh? We've talked about this. Wait, I think we. <laughs> Is it, is it bears? Ding ding! <gasps> oh my oh! god! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, that's right. Didn't a bear go on a rampage and have to be shot down? <laughs> yes. This is yet another uh, bear attacks in Japan. Our, our new beat here at Weird Things, and uh, uh, a wild bear went on a rampage in northern Japanese city of Sapporo on Friday, storming a Japanese military base, forcing its way into an airport and injuring four people. Meanwhile, just all of Russia's cheering. <laughs> They're like, for Mother yeah. Russia! Oh, cool bear. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'd be curious if that video's on YouTube somewhere. But uh, anyhow, um, here is the other... Here's the thing increasing in Japan. Uh, sorry, can you say that again? Why are bear attacks increasing in Japan? I would imagine because there is some kind of well-intentioned policy where it's like, leave the bears alone, and also... Uh, you like hummingbirds? You buy a hummingbird feeder. Oh, what are all these hummingbirds feeding around? You like deer? Here's a deer feeder. Isn't it great having all these deer around? Uh, I'm going to bet people are feeding them deer. Oh, and look it- at this bear. Ah! Well, it's hauling bear butt. It's hauling butt down Sapporo. And could it could it be? Because I feel like I remember there were news stories when the pandemic started about like about is it Nara where you can go and feed the deer and those deer were actually having trouble getting fed because people were not going out as much. Do you think that the bears are more comfortable because people are out less? So Japan has a shrinking population. It's one of the things when we talk about we've talked about this before, like a growing population is actually a good thing. A population that you, that's one size actually means everybody gets older and older and older until there are no, no more young people. And a population that shrinks means you're just like there's a problem in Japan of abandoned houses and people no longer live. There are not enough people for the houses they have. And rural areas, farmland, people get older, they don't want to live out on a farm. So you're getting these farm areas that no longer have people there. And the bears' populations have been increasing. They've been taking over per- territory that humans lived in. So you actually have a growth of the bear population. Wow, And what's happening there is their range has increased tremendously. So now they're coming up against places like Sapporo and other places. So I, I, uh, I, w- I would also imagine that long after a farm is abandoned, it's, it's not, you know, even if nobody's tending and on purpose cultivating, let's say, you know, because I can only speak American, you know, uh, cornfields in Iowa or whatever, even if they go to seed, some number of, of creatures are going to eat some amount of it, and some amount of it is going to keep coming back year after year. And if nobody's around, then why not? Mm-hmm. I and say just, let the bears pay the bear tax, I'm, is what I'm saying. They're living off our land for free. Yeah. Well, and even just uninhabited land means less human encounters, which means they'll get more uh, more bold, more courageous to be around people. Um, wow. that's how, Or are we teach the bears how to farm or we Ooh. we hand them giant beach balls and teach them to balance and entertain us <laughs> like bring back circuses come on man it's the only way to make them civilized i oh. i i saw a bear on a motorcycle once that's that that image of the bear riding a motorcycle in a circus just is just that going yeah around and around and the look mm. on his face like there was like this open door behind him and i'm like is he thinking like 
one of these days, I'm just going to turn it like this. It's me in the highway. <laughs> Once I, they take this third now, wheel off. I, I remember uh, we talked in the past. I don't remember if, that was, if this was bears or wolves, but you, you guys remember that big scarecrow that we talked about in Japan? It was, it was, I think, the shape of a bear, and it had speakers and it had red eyes. Yeah. Um, I wonder if bears could get afraid of something. Is there a bear I wonder if that was crow? four bears. A bear crow? A bear crow? I believe that I was a that four was... bearer of this discussion. Mm-hmm. Japan. Yeah. Uh, so this was from November 2020. To prevent bear attacks, they were using these wolf. Oh, yep. so uh, good. Yeah. And it looks good too. I mean, it's yeah. a little industrial I, with I, the legs. I, I would buy that at uh, uh, spirit Halloween stores once a year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I may have that. You might. Our, our, <laughs> my it's a dragon. Right Damn. now, it's a dragon. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I mean, we're how far removed are we from you know that? becoming the mecca you know mecca wolf well and and so i i suppose this is a realistic question you have to ask um uh man it's such a loaded term environmentalist but let's say you're an environmentalist <laughs> how many how many is too many of any things of any things but Lo- i think locusts bears uh how much nature do you like no, but, uh, but environmentalists don't want unchecked animal growth, right? They want healthy feeding and, and well, feeding cycles and environments. Right. So when when they come into uh, when the, when their feeding involves uh, attacking up to four people in then, Sapporo, then let's shoot that one yeah. and figure out a way. I mean, they're not. I, I don't know who you the ecologist. If that's supposed to be me, I like let's kill it. It should not be around people. But there I, should be places where where animals can thrive in nature. I've said this a couple times on this podcast. I'm kind of disappointed, Bryce, that you've never pulled up video of this as I've said this. You know when I talk about a bear riding a motorcycle a circus? I'm not making that up. You know bears can ride motorcycles, right? Oh. Yeah. Well, I, I, I took your word for it, but uh, I have a feeling that we're about but to see. But no curiosity? See, no, no part of you wants to see? Some, some, uh, some evidence thereof. All also, right. like, uh, I, mean, I mean, but that can't be good for the environment. All those hydrocarbons. <laughs> <laughs> what scared? What strong man? No, that's that's just a bear in a sidecar. It's just count. a bear in a side. Okay, well that. One. <laughs> Type in bear motorcycle what circus. About, what about this? Yeah, I guess the circus part is another sidecar. Oh man, Damn. they love sidecars. He's got a horn. Of Wait, do we get the horn? <laughs> Play the horn. Play the horn. <laughs> 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 oh my god <laughs> oh my gosh okay oh. uh yeah bear on a motorcycle circus i've i've heard of this right i've heard of of uh you know a bear riding a uh a motorcycle yep. we've yep. got this one here bear riding motorcycle at circus whoa that does not appear to be anything other than a genuinely drivable motorcycle <laughs> yeah it looks like just a normal motorbike but with like Bigger uh, footrests. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. I if it's an electric, <laughs> le- okay. Hypothetically, if it's an electric motorcycle and it's powered by green energy, who's against that? Who's against that? Well, <laughs> that bear. That bear's getting fed. Uh, uh, uh-huh. Three hots and a cot. Well, the, the the training environment tends to be the thing I think people have 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 concerns about with circuses. You know circuses. what? You're right. Uh, this time, open road, just east coast <laughs> to west coast. Just a real for, bear driving for, school. For, they 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 call him a, a forest grump <laughs> as he goes back and forth from <laughs> across America. If, but on a motor, not if not was, walk, not riding. No, no, on no, a no, 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 no. Motorcycle <laughs> in style. If I was in charge of the U.S. military, which would one a be a disaster. <laughs> But two would be entertaining is I would have a brigade of bears on motorcycles and monkeys riding dogs. Monkeys riding dogs? A mat. You ever seen that? Monkey rodeo? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I've seen a, a, a mon- monkey riding backwards on a pig, but, uh, mm. but, but I don't. No, monkeys I, riding dogs. Monkey rodeo. Monkey oh rodeo, right? Okay. Know your culture, man. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, so, so let me feel uh, how I feel about this one. I was at a state fair. I'm walking along. I turn around. And I see this thing before me that I didn't know was possible or whatever. And I'm like, oh. what is this? 
So we're looking at this is a report from uh, KSNT. Uh, this is a monkey riding a a, a sheepdog. Oh, oh man. look at him! Oh, and he's getting some speed too. So he's riding the dog as the dog is um, herding sheep. <laughs> so he's like getting some speed. I mean, they we, will we do just saw him counting on his fingers. I'm pretty sure he's counting the number of bananas he's going to get. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude's yeah. working on his 401k. <laughs> They'll do it state fairs. They'll have a bunch of them. You'll see a bunch of monkeys riding dogs in a just racing. I mean, it's kind of racing. Not a lot of <laughs> order there, but that would be like the first thing you would see is the enemy would be there just waiting to see what's going to happen. And they hear the pitter patter of feet and they'd see like, are those are those sheep dogs. And then they'd see monkeys on top of them, riding them. And there'd be the wave of the monkeys on a sheep dog. And then the bears on motorcycles. <sighs> was, was that an actual uh combat technique used to um and make I, I i know that in the wild west part of the um killing off of the buffalo was that you would get them all in a stampede they'd run off a cliff or whatever but did anybody ever stampede a buffalo like into enemy territory just 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 to just to run it on over hmm probably it, maybe i mean it, i've seen that in movies yeah yeah it would it would be tough to to guide them to some degree, that, but that, that was used by by King Scar. Yes, well, and now that, that was in a canyon. It. That yeah. was kind of in a locked in a walled garden sort in of a box canyon. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, this is a, a. Can we get something riding on this monkey? Can we get uh, something yes. riding on this monkey <laughs> riding on this dog? Ticks. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, one hundred percent. You already have. <laughs> like, can we get a a smaller dog riding this monkey riding like a little teacup poodle on <laughs> the monkey? <laughs> I mean, the only thing that 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 we can add, I feel like, is is us riding the money train to fame and glory for putting this together. <laughs> yeah, but of course, we, get, like, we don't need one <laughs> Ratatouille rat pulling on the monkey's ears, steering it. <laughs> and that rat has a parasite. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, you know, we don't we certainly don't need to start a circus of the weird because we have all of your lovely support over on patreon.com slash weird things. Isn't that right, Brian? Dude, that's right. Just a buck an episode. That's all we ask. And you get the uh, both programs, the full show and the after things podcast, where we mm -hmm. get the chance to answer your questions about being an independent creator. You keep the show loud, live, and independent right here every Monday. Thank you to every single one of our patrons over at patreon.com slash weird things. And if you're not listening to After Things, last week we had a fantastic discussion with Brian and Justin about the world's greatest con and, and some of their thoughts and, and processes that go into it. So yeah, if you're, I, I, if I, you're I, excited so about the like top five history podcast, world's greatest con, I don't know, maybe check that out. Well, and, and, and now that it's been, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of, of sort of the ability to sort of release and be like, finally, we, we could tell the world it's happening. Um, I, I, I assume there'll be some talk this week about, oh my God, it's been a full week and it's still happening. And this is this is the part where uh, I, I want so much to talk to Andrew about like, uh, uh, we've kissed some number one spots before, but we, we ain't never hung around this long on anything. And so uh, there, I, I emotionally, uh, uh, spoiler alert, I think my question to Andrew will be, how, how do you resolve, uh, how do you reconcile being okay with like maybe maybe you made something pretty good with you know? the things working out yeah right? <laughs> the plan working exactly <laughs> it, as it's, it's harder uh, than than one would think yeah it is so after that uh, you know and the, the the hard part yeah we'll talk about that i mean i'll just say the short thing is like you never know what you have until it's out there you never know what it's and then it's out there and then you're like then you've got to reconcile all of your thoughts before and like how was i not able to predict yeah. Right. And then and then and then you try to do it again and then it's like it doesn't hit and you're like, I don't understand. I did everything the same. Why didn't it work? Yeah. yeah. Uh so one more time, your support is greatly appreciated. Patreon.com slash weird things. So we've talked about this before, but I want to show you this is kind of really cool. Uh Bright Sky put if I put the link into the chat, is that cool? Yeah, that's totally fine. One of the things that's neat is if you use computer systems like deep learning and you train them on a lot of data it starts to understand we've seen this before with video games and like training thing computer you know training computers how to play games mm. one of the things now is using computers having them watch so much footage that it learns how to emulate the game right and this is like a tiny kind of game engine that emulates grand theft auto driving so everything we're seeing there is no there is no 3d model of a car in here 
There's no model of the roads or anything like this. This is clearly like when you watch one of those, like this space doesn't exist. Mm. That's what it's taking input from the user as they control the car Wow! and generating everything. Nobody designed this world. It learned it by just watching so much footage of Grand Theft Auto. And now, this now, is this is a part of the map. This is not like a new, this is like, this is the bridge right by the military base. This it is like captured. I mean, it's low fidelity, low resolution, but mm. it, it looks accurate and... It seems it certainly seems like this car is driving around on the highway. Does the AI, yeah. as it watches this, these hundreds of thousands of hours of footage, do they also get information on input from the controls so that it knows yes. that, that that you you know left? Well, it seems like whenever someone goes left, this car moves this way. Yeah, in this case, absolutely. That's so that's what it it says. Oh, left, absolutely, Brian. So that that's the signal. So it says this will equal this. So, and it it's. Yeah, you know, we look at this and you might go, oh, it's kind of janky, but it's the, the critical part was, can it learn that controller input? Does it learn how the environment changes around it? And then picking up these other rules as it moves along. And, you know, we're, we're not, I think game engines of the future are going to be things where you just say, oh, take, you could, you could program a game with your phone, take a picture of a car, take a picture of an environment, and then say, these are the rules. Yeah. Or even your own commute i mean in a world where let's say you are driving a tesla vehicle or whatever and it has recordings of your your you know everywhere you've driven for three or four years in high fidelity whatever and it has all of the telemetry data of every every amount of turning left and turning right you've ever done and your style of driving and the type of cars that that, that you I mean, even even right down to because I believe there are dash cams where it records you yelling at other people. Uh, then mm -hmm. it could piece together, like you could you could make a game called uh, <laughs> tailored for you, your worst commute. <laughs> well, you could, but I, my thing is you could take that extent further and like take the video feed from here and do a thing called be Brian the podcaster. Yeah. And, yeah. And oh, when you're in front of this microphone, this guy over here does this and does this. And then people go, yay or boo. Yeah. But, uh, do we know, uh, is this a academic project or a military? I would assume if it's military, they're NVIDIA. probably not sharing it. Okay. So it's in video. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, this is, this is so incredible. I mean, uh, we're, I, I'm excited to see where this goes. Cause I mean, we, the footage that we're seeing is like, it's, a car driving in one very like set position um and we're, oh, we're seeing some like interesting glitches happen when it doesn't know what to do with like collisions but uh, or some almost cars because it, it seems like it does understand that sooner or later other vehicles kind of come and go but it but it but it has a hard time holding on to object permanence or whatever yeah it doesn't know what yeah, to do when it, it crashes against a wall and, and we've like. seen this like with the, the Pac-Man, the one that learned how to make Pac-Man by watching Pac-Man. It, it gets some rules, but it is one of these things when you we get to the next generation of processors in memory. If if we if we if we square the amount of memory and the amount of processing in here, you'll start to see like that's an open AI found with GPT-3 and stuff, was that when you scaled these things up, you could actually get massive improvements. And sometimes the fear was, oh, it's just it's it's incremental and it doesn't go beyond a certain point. The other problem with large models, it's like it's like kind of trying trying to turn an ape into King Kong. You know, you have to, you can't have the same physiology. These models, as they get bigger, you have to sort of change things. But we're looking at a video here of NVIDIA GameGAN, which is I think the same people that worked on what we saw with Grand Theft Auto. This is virtual. This is Pac-Man from basically a, a neural network that learned just by seeing the screen output and taking the controller inputs, how the game of Pac-Man works. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting. This is just like a commercial that, that we've got here, but it mm -hmm. says the AI recreated Pac-Man in just days with NVIDIA Game Gan. But I mean, as processing power gets up, as, as processing efficiency goes up, like something like this could take seconds, could take milliseconds, could just take a, oh, yeah. a handful of CPU cycles. And then you know, like the Grand Theft Auto that we saw, that's going to get even even higher fidelity, and then maybe it breaks out of out of game out of extant games. Maybe it comes up with Grand Theft Auto Seven or what have you. It it mm -hmm. finds its own new thing to generate, and I think that's going to be really exciting when when there is original idea synthesis and execution. 
Mm -hmm. I, I think that the power of creating these sort of environments and things is going to, you won't need, you know, a small team would be able to do what it takes a team of several hundred to do today. I think that's one of the first big things is we're going to realize is that, is that if I get a couple of, if I get a couple of really cool designers and yeah. some people are really good at figuring out game mechanics and we form a team, the tools will do the rest for us. So uh, what this reminds me of is, uh, uh, um, oh, you, uh, you guys remember which engine is which, but what mm -hmm. was the one that started off being taught the rules of Go and being fed a bunch of games? And then they just, <laughs> then they just like, better yet, just watch people play Go. Uh, uh, is, 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 that, is that, that's not OpenAI, is it? No, that was, that was Google DeepMind. So yeah, that was AlphaGo. AlphaGo was the one where it, it had to watch a bunch of human games. AlphaGo Zero was the one where it just played itself and it became even better. And that wow. was the criticism of AlphaGo at the time was like, well, it's just storing all these games and da, da, da. And it's like, okay. But that's what, what people do. plays itself? Mm. Yeah. What if it plays itself and we don't train it on human stuff and AlphaGo Zero was even more powerful? And it was like, nope, the computer learned this game, <laughs> you know, and, and that was... Go was one of the things I was holding out for, like, man, like, if, if computers can't beat us at Go, then maybe there's a hope of, like, you know, the, that that kind of GPT-3 were me, like, all right, time time to go work for these people. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I could see it go in so many interesting directions. Like, for example, this Grand Theft Auto uh, version, um, in the short term, I could see, okay, just upload the UI. Let, let, let them know... Uh, the human user is accustomed to this level of acceleration, this level of, of whatever, and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, so, so you sort of shortcut to it feeling like a traditional game of Grand Theft Auto. But, but then uh, I, I'm certain that the faster the uh, computing processor gets, the, the quicker it will eliminate that step. And then all of a sudden I start thinking of like, uh, okay, so now you're in a 360 degree theater and uh, you're able to walk in place and it's just a simulation of, 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 of uh, your town or whatever. And it starts noticing your eye tracking and uh, notices that, oh, you don't seem interested. You're not looking at the cash register. You're looking at the, the cute barista. And so then all of a sudden the barista notices you and it becomes a flirtation game. And then it becomes, and then just as you start to get a phone number, suddenly somebody interrupts you. And now all of a sudden, you have to navigate, you know, it, it becomes all of a sudden you're playing a dating sim or whatever, or, mm -hmm. or let's say it starts to notice that uh, you're exhibiting signs that, that biologically indicate that you're kind of bored by everything. And so you know, there's a car crash outside. Uh, and then, and then, and then depending on how you physiologically react, suddenly there's a kaiju and, and, and on and on and on. Like, like you begin the game, not even knowing what kind of game it's going to be. Like, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 I don't know. Like, I love the idea of just yeah. you're, 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 you're in a Starbucks and it notices that you're noticing the chessboard and in walks a guy who says, uh, 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 I have a hundred thousand dollars against your liver. <laughs> Let's play a game, you know? And then they, I don't live, no, yeah. I'll, yeah. I can and, pay. And I've got, I'll get some money. Let me and have my liver. Under, <laughs> and for understanding, like, like and, and when people in chat have mentioned like, well, procedurally generated is there. Like, yeah, procedurally generated computer stuff is older than me. But there's somebody writing an algorithm to say, this is a tree. These are how to make trees, and you can make them vary. You can make environments and stuff. You know, uh, like No Man's Sky, whatever. Like, they're, they're like amazing examples of that now. They're fantastic. But every one of those involves somebody saying, this is the engine to create worlds. This is the randomizer. This is a. Comp this is just a neural network that just watches a bunch of stuff and says, oh, I noticed there were trees here. I'm going to make these. Well, I don't know what these things are with the, the brown things, the bushy things. I'm going to make these, and sometimes they're different. And I'm going to make these. I'm going to make that. Nobody told it. Nobody said, this is your procedural generator. You got to generate. It just learned by watching this stuff. And that's cool and scary and cool. And like Brian's point is like an engine, a neural network game engine like, yeah, like, you know what? Like, this town would be better if it was set in medieval times, you know? And then, oh, mm -hmm. cool, boom, it's medieval. And all of a sudden, you're in a very different environment because it doesn't have to be programmed how to do that. Well, and, and uh, I suppose, again, like at that, that physiological response, you're wearing heart monitors and it's you got an EEG on. And let's say you walk this in is, okay, and, yeah. and, and you punch the barista and uh, the cops begin to show up. And then let's mm -hmm. say it doesn't excite me. Uh, that the cops are showing up like at some level it's like well this guy clearly ex expects it and it and so then it becomes 
a game of hostage negotiation. Ah! And then involuntarily, I'm like, well, this is interesting. And then it's hostage negotiator 5,000 or something like that. And or then, I, what's, what's or funny? Like, I'm, I'm done. And you think you take the game off and you're like, oh, cool. I'm back in my living room. Everything's cool. And then your face starts to melt and your children attack you. And you're like, <laughs> and then, then Michael Douglas shows up and he's, he's like, yeah. it's been a game the whole time. <laughs> Welcome to crappy black mirror. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think you're absolutely right. I think that, uh, you know, one of the things that's kind of neat that they're working on an Oculus at the, with like next generation Oculus is eye tracking. They're putting those into Oculus because one, it can help with rendering the graphics. There's a thing called foveation, which is, if you just worry about making the graphics really detailed in the center, you don't have to do higher resolution towards the outer edges. The other thing is they're working on that eye tracking because they can build these, uh, have the optics adjusted. So if you hold up your hand, you get depth of field or you get you know, the things have a much better sense of depth to it. And it's one of those things where I go like, oh, I like, I'm inside there. It feels cool and real. But I have a feeling it's once, once you try it, you're like, oh my God, this is so cool. Everything else is crap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Man, once once just something as simple as eye dilation is going to be a game changer. Where it's it could just tell your board, <laughs> and then and if it's like Take, uh, your, time to shake it up, boys. <laughs> your Apple Watch, you know, like you put any kind of sensor data in there, you know, like how many monsters they can send. Absolutely, yeah. Hey, uh, want to buy a house? Want to buy of course. a house? In in this economy, of course I would. <laughs> so, uh, imagine buying a piece of property a little bit of rural property. Okay. And finding out that you didn't know everything about it. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> I I can really imagine this. Am I sure I check space to see if I'm wearing VR goggles? <laughs> <laughs> Some uh Oregon homeowners they bought a house uh and again, well, again it says Oregon homeowners and it says Utah. But I know that area and I know what's going on. So anyhow, hmm. uh, yeah, in Oregon, bought a home and they found out it's actually got Wait. kind of a very cool feature to it. Okay, Brian. Yes. A hidden cool feature of, of a rural piece of property. Speakeasy. There's a uh, there's a hidden permitted speakeasy. <laughs> they, the... they they actually they knocked the right way on the right door, <laughs> and a skeleton opens it <laughs> and says uh, it's, uh, and then taps his non-existent nose and invites them in. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I almost I I wonder if uh, somebody in the chat says missile silo, but, oh, but I, I yeah. guess what he's probably saying is like a, 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 a survivalist bunker. Oh something. yeah. I was going to say, I think we kind of know where the silos are for the, yeah. for the missile. Yeah. I almost wonder Do if this, we? <laughs> well, I wonder if it's like a cave or something, some like, like a subterranean. Ding, ding. What? They bought their home and they found out there was a giant lava tube under <gasps> Oh, do they legally get all of that? Oh my god! Do you get? Yeah, do you yeah, get? Of course that? you do. Why wouldn't you? I, I think you do. I think. You, I mean, who else gets it? The mole man? I mean, <laughs> here we have a deed to your lava tomb, <laughs> dude. That's amazing. Holy I mean, crap! You, you build that out. You make your 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 uh, your, your 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 space paradise that, in there. You simulate your moon base, moon base right, Earth. Right, right. Yo. The, the, the couple says when, the, when they bought the property, the realtor mentioned there was a small cave under the land. Instead, the homeowners found an under, underground so large that even standing up, they can't reach the ceiling, and they haven't explored all of it yet. So, so are they worried about? I assume at that point you call an expert, and he uh, walks around and says, "Okay, you either do or do not have to worry about this caving in on you anytime soon." But then, meanwhile, even if it is kind of rickety, uh, that's that's like an HGTV episode, right? It's like, oh no, I've <laughs> discovered a cave, and then it's like, uh, it's me. I'm I'm King Beams. I've got lots of these beams. Uh, Bob, we'll just put Bob all these Vila, up. This old cave. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh. I'd be like, man, maybe I should become a crime fighter. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all Free fun layer. games up until the skeletons with their shields and swords come out to defend their treasure. The procedurally generated rats start showing I mean, there's, up. This is so much potential for like YA fiction, too. You know, it's like 
Oh, sure. A secret society down there, and they're not allowed to dance. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go to the Lithgow dance cave tonight, kids. Why is John Lithgow in my cave? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, this it's is a very huge. underrated movie. Look uh, at Footloose is a very underrated movie. Mm. This this is a huge tube. Like it, it is. You couldn't. There are certainly parts of it where you can't I mean, touch I mean, the ceiling. Uh, uh, for those who can't see the video, I just want you to picture like a forty-eight inch widescreen four K. Just just natty light cans all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Dude says this is my man cave. <laughs> <laughs> it's also just a cave. Got a got a poster of a cave woman in a bikini. <laughs> Wow, that's a. So they, 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 yeah, wow. they brought in the local cave or cave club to come in there to, to call up the cave club, Cave Busters, and they just wow. went in. And, yep, it's a cave. <laughs> you gotta, got you, a cave here. Real genuine cave. I'll tell you what. Not only do you put a door on that, but but you spend you spend some good money on a little PC that asks you three riddles to get inside. Like that's that's the, no simple pin pad, no keys or locks or nothing. Good morning, John. That's that's, that's right. You have to knock thrice, and all of a sudden, a, a zombie, rest in peace, uh, shows up and and says, "Mecca, like a high mecca, get lost." Chump, and then you have to answer three riddles. R.I.P. By the way, uh, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, uh, it's all fun and games till uh, Tom Hanks and his friends show up to play Dungeons and Dra Mazes and Monsters. Mazes and Monsters, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Everyone, uh, anybody out there? It, it was a great example of a movie that was supposed to warn you off of something, but only made you kind of go like, "Oh yeah, this looks kind of cool." <laughs> like, I think I want to do this. <laughs> You'll lose your mind. Deal. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, what, what, yeah. I, I never, I never saw mazes and monsters. Did they give any kind of like logical if then therefore logic or? Oh I, yeah. I, 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 the, I mean, the psychologist. Exp yeah, the psychologist explains that when you become too enmeshed in a fantasy world, it could be hard to know what's real and what's not. And the next thing you know, you're stuck. And so at the end of this, uh, you have uh, Tom Hanks and his friends uh, basically go play this game called Basis Monsters in an actual cave, and he becomes sort of obsessed with the game. And then he just kind of snaps, and then, you know, he he's... He never get he like he play he's at home and but he'll like he'll cause his mom the innkeeper and like oh I left three pieces of gold for the innkeeper he can't just can't get out of the game because like wow. remember D, remember those millions of kids who played D and D who are stuck in asylums now who <laughs> yeah well <laughs> see here's the here's the thing people know nobody thought of two words my friends Darwinian fitness because ain't none of those people procreating <laughs> anybody who. <laughs> Can't keep track of gold pieces and whether or not their mom's an innkeeper not getting laid. Not touching that. <laughs> I know. That's what everyone says to that guy. <laughs> Have you not watched I, The Simpsons? <laughs> I was, I was, I was going to make, I, I tweeted something about Dim, D, uh, Demio last night. And I'm like, also going to like put in, I'm like, yeah, it may, may affect your relationship because like I'm just anticipating the obvious like, well, can't get a girl, whatever kind of thing. You know, the girlfriend sort of keep forgetting it's 2021 and that argument kind of died 20 years ago, but still you get that. But then uh, I watched this, somehow I found this YouTube video of a guy who's got this, he's got this club where they play D&D &D and he's got this room where they got this table and he's got an LCD display built into the table where they can do their like their character maps and all this sort of stuff. And it was like the most hardcore sort of thing ever. I'm like, well... Maybe that stereotype is true when you listen to this guy talk. <laughs> well, and 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 I uh, the the point being that um, being obsessed to the point of ignoring other loved ones is 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 the trick, not not whether or not it's Dungeons and Dragons related. <laughs> yeah, Brian, is this a hint? I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is a cry for help from me. From you? Oh no. <laughs> uh, you. you I've been playing Demio in skirmish mode. I'm just gonna tell you that a lot. Oh, dude, you know, you know, you gotta text me. I, I, I had all weekend free. All right, should have done that. Should have done that. Rat King's coming soon. So, um, gentlemen, uh, let's do picks. Yeah, I got a pick. Uh, uh, pick. It's called 
Rick and Morty, but Rick and Morty is too many syllables. So I just like to shorten it to two syllables as Loki. Uh, Same show. (laughs) (laughs) It's great. Loki is like uh, high key. Very, very good. Uh, I, I, the second episode came out this week and I was like, astonished it felt impossibly good it felt it reminded me of the first avengers in that the script was very tight and very punchy and fun and had you know that kind of joss whedon sort of back and forth um but it's i I don't it's just it's really really good and i think it stands on its own like i don't i think you don't need you could come to it fresh and it, it, you would all work. You know who, what a Loki is, right? Uh, we generally have an idea of what a Loki character is. That's all you need. Yep. Owen Wilson's there. That's cool. I I really dug the first episode. I enjoyed the second. My issue with the second was Marvel sh- or all of these Disney, like the Marvel and the Star and the Mandalorian shows, they sometimes have a real pacing problem. Mm. And the second one, my girlfriend fell asleep. So I had to watch it by myself because she fell asleep in the middle of now we're here having this conversation about this. Now let's go over here and have this conversation about this. It could have been more efficient. It could have been, I enjoy, there's nothing I'd say, oh, this is dumb or this is dumb. I enjoyed all those little beats to it, but it was it, I was kind of fan of menace kind of vibes of like, well, now we're going to go to this room and have a conversation where I think it could have been condensed and tighter. Uh, man, I did not, I did not feel that at all. I love, I loved it. Uh, uh, to me, it was a, a comfy soak. As a matter of fact, uh, it took, I, I it, enjoyed it, Brian. I enjoyed it. it I'm took, saying if you asked me to, what would make it awesome would be that, uh, it, it took me until the second episode that I realized that they were doing some time banditsy stuff with those, uh, time gates that they come in and out of like aesthetically speaking. Uh, I enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, yeah, no. L- Loki's very good. Yeah. Um it, I, yeah, it's 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 very good. Um I I've got a pick. This is um I I bought this over the weekend and I think it's a pretty cool thing. It is an an, an iOS app. I guess you, you can get it on the Mac OS as well. Uh it's called Things. Um it is a uh task manager to do list sort of uh uh, sort of system. Um, it's very cool. You have an inbox and you put the things that you need to do in your inbox. Uh, and then you, in the morning, you say what the things you're going to get done today from the inbox are, and then you just focus on those. And once you're done, you're done for the day. Uh, they've got this projects thing where you can have, you know, a larger kind of collection of, of, of tasks. You have areas. So you can say, well, here are these tasks that have to do with the, with work stuff or with this or that. It's a it, and the other nice thing is that it feels really um, uh, intuitive, right? It's it, you you have different gestures and swipes and things so that you know you can uh, you can work really quickly, which I think is really cool. Um, I think the I, the iOS app is like ten dollars, which is a little steep uh, compared to what most people pay for apps, but I I think it's very good. I really want to try the Mac OS app, but that app is fifty dollars. Um, it syncs with everything. You get the cloud stuff, whatever. But I don't, I don't know that I'm ready to make that jump. But I, I think it's it's really nice to <laughs> look. I want to get things done. Come on, <laughs> not that. <much. laughs> That's right. But yeah. so it's and and they've got the widgets on the iOS. So I, when I when I open up my phone, like I can see these are the things that I still have to do today. Um, and you can have different lists. I I, I think it's really interesting. Um, and um, we'll, we'll see we'll see how it goes. But I, I'm really liking that and using that as a as a means to pace myself throughout throughout the week. So yeah, things. I'm gonna do two picks, but I'll make them brief. Uh, pick number one, Rick and Morty, season five, episode one. And and the reason I bring that up was because like compared to Loki, that 22 minutes, man, it's tight. You look at the stories you got in there between, you know, Nimbus, uh, Jessica and Morty, uh, Ho- Hoovy and his people like <laughs> a, a civilization spanning story and this in 22 minutes it's one of those you met up like holy cow how do they how do they do that in 22 minutes it was kind of amazing so that that's just kind of makes me conscious of of you know when i watch story i'm like there could be more going on here what i like i like what i like i like mm. it i love it to be like a little more put a layer there but uh went to there is this thing i don't want to I don't want to like get in 
it in trouble or me in trouble, but like, Oh my God. Are you about you to see what to... I think it is a place where you can know. see uh like, I mean, if you, you go somewhere and then you can, yeah, you know, maybe you can see, see, you can see it all. You get together like other people there and you just sort of like, let's, let's just say like room. if there was a hole in the wall, <laughs> all people could see it all. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I went to, went to a place where I sat in some chairs with my girlfriend and recliner and we had some food and masks oh. and uh, we watched this thing with other people there in the same space. Oh my God, you went to a movie theater! Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. that's coming <laughs> back to me now. Uh, did not see Fast and Furious 9, did see A Quiet Place 2. Ooh. Uh, a quieter place. <laughs> uh, not as real time. Uh, any of you seen it? Uh, no, but uh, oh, yeah. but I liked where it looked like they were headed. Um, you can either confirm or deny. I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but from the trailer, it appeared as though half of the movie took place in the past and the other half took place in the the present uh, slash uh, continuing future. Is is that is that accurate? Uh, there. A prologue in the present. Yeah. Oh. Other than that, it's it's after. It's just oh, it's okay. more of just I sort see. of world, world, a little bit of world building, not a lot, it. but then it's then it's it's just and then it continues on. So I don't hope that doesn't ruin it for anybody. I don't think it should. It's more you're just going to see part of. Um, so, uh, it is remarkable. It is very short though. It is one of these things where it it has this sort of kind of abruptness to it. So it's. The length of this movie is pretty short, um, it's but it's good. It's really, minutes. really solid. Yeah, yeah, and you shave off credits and stuff there, and but it, it works. It's about it the flows. length of um, one Loki and one uh, Rick and Morty combined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, very much enjoyed it, and you know, John uh, wrote and directed this, I believe. Yep, and. Uh, so I thought he did a very good job of it. Feels very cinematic. You know, sometimes when actors make the leap to directing, they don't feel that. Maybe they're great with the actors, but for the directing point of view, I thought it was done really well. And he's clearly, clearly going to be part of a series because not all the threads are going to be tied up. There are going to be things uh, there like, ah, oh, look at this. I mean, once Quiet you, Place 4, yeah, Quiet I mean, Place 5. When, once you make part two, the doors are open yeah. on, hey, this is, this is a franchise now. Which, like, yeah. is cool. I mean, I think it's interesting having what is essentially a new horror franchise um, being established. Yeah. And considering that Emily Blunt is his wife, I wonder what, like, you know. <laughs> well, we do a Quiet Place 3. the different. We do a Quiet Place 3. If somebody else, oh, we're doing this now? Well, aren't, aren't we, babe? Uh, <laughs> we're going to see my availability, <laughs> aren't we? You know. <laughs> I don't know. I found some uh, shoes in the foyer, you know, I'm wondering, uh, are we doing a quiet place three? Uh, you know, <laughs> where do you want to go tonight? Uh, I don't know. Depends. Do you want to do another movie, hon? Mm. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, um, if you like the first one, I think you'll like this. Nice. And clearly they're continuing the series. Cool. So very cool. It's been weird. Bear attack. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you did get me good with bears. I did not see the bears coming. <laughs> That's the problem. Nobody sees the bears coming. <laughs> You're all very bad. All right, we'll take a minute. We'll come back with some after things. I scooped. I scooped you on both of the on two of those stories today, Andrew. Apologies. Oh my goodness. He's. I got the thumbs up. Great. Hello, everybody. We're gonna start some after things in just a moment. I'm gonna take a look at. The Showbit. See if anybody submitted some show titles over at nightattack.showbot.tv. We got a couple here. Bear Crow. Oh, I like. Oh, but that kind of gives it up. Gum Bear Rally. Real Man Cave. Oh, these are good, and they give up the. They give up the bit. They give up the bit. Uh, I also had a very similar experience over the weekend. I um, was was celebrating my birthday on uh, Saturday, and um, uh, we went uh, went to a. A local bar downtown. About, I don't know, seven or eight friends together. It was great. It was fantastic. It was good it was good being out. It was good uh just being around everybody, hugging people again. Ah, you just miss sometimes you just miss a hug. Sometimes you just miss a hug. Hi. Somebody say birthday? 
Ha- happy birthday. Oh my goodness. Oh, thank you. Wow. That's, that's from Brian, Justin, and the crew. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. Can I open this now? Is this going to be... Okay. Oh, thank you. Ah, uh, okay. Well, then we'll, we'll take a look. Uh, this is not... Like, we got nice paper? Look at that. Oh, you get... This is how you know, this, uh, right, Dr. Sire, Dr. Kyra says, uh, here, I'll start opening it. Hope maybe, maybe Brian will be back by the time. Um, I wonder what this is. I, uh, my, my parents sent me, sent me a gift. They got me a, uh, uh, if you watched, I, I was streaming a little Sunday on, on my Brightcast channel. And, uh, they sent me these little, this little lav mic set thing that, uh, worked pretty well. I was able to do, you know, about an hour and a half of, of some DDR stuff. And then, uh, and didn't really seem like we had a lot of uh uh had a lot of bumping blowing issues so uh, that was pretty cool um well i guess i guess i don't know should i, I I'll, I'll wait for brian because i'm I, he might want to oh, see i actually i see a little bit i got a little brown a little brown box there um but yeah that was very sweet of them and so uh, oh, I see. Says a quiet place too will be on Paramount Plus around the middle of July. Interesting. Yeah, because I guess a quiet place too is like technically a 2020 movie, huh? Oh. Um. Uh. I'm. I'm a little. I'm, we we have uh, some some. Uh, uh, this probably doesn't affect anything about the way people are watching the show, but. Our um, our third computer over here. I think the I think the hard drive's failed on it. So yeah, it won't it won't boot. Or when it, when it boots, it says it asks for a boot drive. So we may need to either just reseat reseat the drive and see if that'll get it. Or uh, yeah, maybe just get another. Because I'm sure we've got plenty of recovery disks around here. Um, yeah. Uh, hell, I think that the jump drive in that in that um, mixer is one of them so um but yeah uh, no, i i haven't opened it yet i see you. i haven't i haven't opened it yet um but yeah i'd like to go i'd like to go back to i'd like to go to the movies i thought i might um i thought nobody might would be the one that i go to see back in the theaters with bill ba, ba, with bill odenkirk well yo you know will william odenkirk no uh bob odenkirk, bob odenkirk. But... um but then I ended up watching that on Discord with a bunch of friends. It's the one just we just all watched it once online. Did you see the new stuff for FaceTime? The new like uh, the new the WWDC stuff, like the share friend mm-hmm. stuff and all that. How they're impl- you know impl- and what's been another you know other platforms have had that too. Yeah, it it's it's um it's cool because it seems like you know like Discord and stuff have like mobile screen sharing and stuff. And yeah. I kind of thought w- FaceTime would never do that only because a lot of what Apple's design mm. trends tend to be is less is more, really cover. Yeah, uh, me three on Dune, everybody. Me three on Dune, by the way. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I think that- Oh, Dune. But the fact that Face FaceTime on the web, great, right, because yeah. that's been one of the biggest um, interesting factors of that has been the idea that finally, because it's like, like Apple has a like iMessage is such an amazing platform because part of it's because of the security, part mm-hmm. of the security and the robustness. But if you don't choose to use an Apple device, then you still can talk to people, you know, but you can't get all the features of that. Yeah. What do you, uh, did, did you look into, I, I looked into the other day the private relay stuff that they announced as well. I thought that was fascinating as a, as a different hands off way of, protecting some browsing trends this the the, the private mm-hmm. relay was definitely a less is more sort of um feature but it's fascinating that they're doing it and that you know a bunch of people will just get it because they already pay for iCloud storage yeah i mean it's amazing what you're incentivized for when you're not incentivized for advertising it's amazing how seriously you'll take security and privacy when you're not incentivized for that yeah um I uh, did you see the demo of the WWC where they showed the sharing of like they had a uh, an iMac next oh. to the, the the laptop next to the iPad and basically just dragging the doc- document across all the screens mm-hmm. like was insane very very clever yeah that that was uh, f- 
fantastic. Um, uh, I, I read that you can only start that from a Mac. Um, you, uh, you can't do it, say, from the other way around. You can't start it. Oh, from maybe, that, but, maybe. But most people probably don't have a mouse for their iPad anyway. Uh, it's it's um, it's interesting. It is very interesting. I always forget a lot of times that, like, AirDrop exists. Um, and so I, I forget because it doesn't always work. That's my problem, though, is the <laughs> consistency there drives me nuts. Yeah. Um, all right, Brian's back in the room, so I'll I'll keep opening this. I'm 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 told I've got a gift from from the people. So, all right, so here we go. Happy birthday, Bryce, from the Brushwoods jury and the crew. Thank you, everybody. Got a live reaction here, live unboxing. I try not. I I don't know if it's the household that I grew up in, but I don't. I I always feel weird tearing open wrapping paper. I'm not like a grr, 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 type of opener i don't know are you guys like that oh yeah are you kidding me that's Tear. half the joy right there all right there's a label that i've I did been not in some see. households were like oh no don't rip it because we're gonna use it again and it's like well, oh yeah yeah oh i'm what, sorry what, was, what, this, was this for me was this for me <laughs> well and and also it's just like uh once you figure out that's a big old fat lie anyway <laughs> it's yeah. like you never yeah. are and if you are then shame on you <laughs> Can it, Bryce, you should ask Brian if you can eat the receipt too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh my goodness! This. Oh, thank you very much. A, a Scarlet a Focus Right. This is incredible. And I just and I just got those love mics that I was telling you about. So this is perfect. It's a, a, a an audio uh, interface. This is a really nice one. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Very thank cool. You, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, here, this is your blade. I don't need to be on. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. Wow, thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. I'm super excited about that. I was, I was telling them earlier, my parents sent me these little lav mics for my birthday. And so I was playing DDR on stream yesterday with it. And it, it worked really well. It wasn't a lot of like huffing or puffing or hearing, you know, hearing all sorts of noise. It was Are great. they the ones that record locally or transmit or? Uh, they transmit. It's, it's a weird thing where like, it's got a receiver and it's only like this, this big, it's very small, mm -hmm. but there are two transmitters. So the receiver takes both of those in which is fascinating. So you can have two people on the same, you know, input plug. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. doesn't have a mute button though. So, Oh <laughs> but yeah. Cause it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of a, a more value conscious set, but it was, it works interesting. And it's nice. It's just for having around the house. That's awesome. All right. You guys want to do some after things? Yeah. All right. And well, then Andrew, I will count you in here in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Adrian Mean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. And Mr. Bryce Birthday Boy Castillo. Ah, that's me. Hello, everybody. 30, 31 years young. Oh, 31. <laughs> oh, so, oh, I'm just getting wistful. <laughs> <laughs> whimsical looks remember. across the <laughs> room <laughs> it was literally one of those like i don't even know what i did that year i have no <laughs> idea um so uh remember it all use some use your things software bryce to remember it all okay. so uh we're not here to talk about you bryce is you know, <laughs> except you're trying to shoot on your way to the conversation yes <laughs> so brian yeah dude um you you did a you did a thing with Justin. Yep, and you, uh, you made a thing about the greatest con that saved civilization. Yep. Uh. Yeah. 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 And you'd think that it's like, well, now the pressure's off. You did the thing. Oh wait, it's well beloved. Well, now the pressure's really off. What you did the thing, and it's spent one full week as the number one top trending podcast on all of Pocket Casts. Well, the pressure must really be off. To which I can now honestly say, <laughs> um, <laughs> what is what do, is it? Is it an expectations thing? Do you think that you've you're do you, do you feel like society is building up expectations for you? Um, is that what? Mm, 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 mm. Well, uh, I know that before we released the thing, mm -hmm. we were able to to sit and giggle and and feel good about. Uh, the secret thing that we were working on and then it became not secret. And, uh, and now other people get to make decisions about how they feel about it and talk about it in public and so on. 
Uh, and in that regard, again, I'm, I'm super, super happy. If you look uh, uh, in the category of history on Apple uh, Podcasts, you'll notice that there are 560 reviews and the average review, and I know, I know that the law of large numbers comes for us all eventually, but the average is five out of five, which is uh, uh, fa fairly remarkable in, in my experience looking at podcasts, right? Yeah. And then, you're, uh, you're still number 14 in all, in all history podcasts. Right. And then, uh, uh, and, and still number one trending in pocket casts. And so, uh, uh, oh, hold on. So like last night I texted Justin, I was like, look, um, uh, I am aware that, that, that sooner or later we're, uh, it won't be true. So I'm going to say it while it's true. Uh, at this moment we have the number one trending top rated podcast on the planet because you can't do better than number one and you can't do better than, than five out of five. <laughs> and so, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying very hard to enjoy the moment and, and let it be whatever it's going to be. And, uh, there, there are brief, flashes of what are we going to do next? How fast do we start? You know, we got to keep this momentum going. We should already be pitching it as a TV show. We should, we should, we should, we should. Um, I suspect that not much of the, those thoughts are very healthy for me to be having. And, um, I so think you just, it's, I, I don't think that they are bad thoughts. I think you can't let yourself get a, get washed away in all of them all at once. Especially because at the same time, uh, we are now one week and one day away from relaunching our Tuesday night shenanigans and mm -hmm. uh, figuring out where we want to go from there. It's um, uh, I, I was absolutely delighted. We were talking between the shows about how I had two whole days of nothing to do. And I was shocked at how quickly I pivoted into uh, needing something to do. <laughs> and and uh, I feel like, I feel like uh, Andrew has, number one, a lot more experience in this sort of boom and bust release cycle and probably has some um, psychological advice for, for keeping one's cool uh, in times like these. Uh, I'm lucky in that, like, in publishing, my role is carved out for me. Okay, because I'm in this groove where I do two books a year and I furiously write a book, panic that it's not going to be good enough, do whatever I need, get it over the finish line, get it to my editors, then get it back, polish it, get it off, then spend several months not thinking about books. Then I get, oh, there's a deadline coming up, another book due. And then when it comes time for release of the book, I can, I do what I can to do that. What I think is smart, I don't jump through all the hoops that are put in front of me. And then I know that it's gonna be, it, it, it's even even if you're ascending, it's gonna be like this and be down a bit, and this, then up a bit, and this up a bit. When Naturalist came out, that was my first book with Amazon Publishing. I pushed and I got very lucky because I got selected to be an Amazon Prime first, which meant that I was gonna get that really, really, really lucky slot of getting, having every Prime member would be able to read it for free, which would give you the boost in reviews. Mm. And I thought, okay, cool. That means it's kind of my work is done. I'm like, no, my work's not done. And because the day it came out for everybody else, I pushed like hell and I watched it get, I watched it get on that first week, number one for all books. And you're like, oh man, look at this. This is amazing. And I'm like, cool, look what I did. Then it was second week, number one for all books. And you're like, oh, this is cool. Does it stay? I mean, it can't stay there forever. How long will it stay? And then it ended up being seven weeks, but I knew after that, I'm never going to have a book do that again. Never going to have that again. <laughs> and, that, well, and, but you, and, and, and that's the part that the, um, uh, the, the uh, part of me talking to myself says, Hey man, seems like the only way to really screw this up is to not even enjoy the illusion while you have it. No, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're, <laughs> but you're in a different position because I got the best signal boost you could ever hope for, which was getting selected, you know, that 70 million email that goes out from Amazon. You guys, this is your first, let's do a really well-produced project together like this. You're going to be, it, it may be a stair step down a bit, but it's going to be a big ascendancy. You're going to see that. I'm, I know I'm not going to top 
you know, that with a naturalist because of the boost. Like Girl Beneath the Seed, it got that same boost and it did fantastic, but the world had changed. You're in a position where every time you guys come, the team comes together, think of yourself as a rock band, okay? You're not musicians performing at the pizzeria. You're not, you're not people that have to go every Friday night and go do a show. You're a rock band. When that band comes together and does something cool, there's going to be all the fans you had before. There's going to be all the fans you picked up from the last thing. And you're going to have that platform's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'm saying you're in a different position. And, and you, you may see a drop because it might be next time's a topic that maybe won't be as exciting, but the product will be great. But that's like with books, I realize like I can't judge myself by one book. I've got to have a pattern of books because sometimes a book will hit. You know, Dan Brown, like people go, oh, Da Vinci Code, Da Vinci, da Vinci Code was the second book. The, the first book was not as engaging as the second one, right? But that second one, he dealt with religion, all that sort of stuff. And mm -hmm. my point to say is like you sometimes it's that topic. And so you're in a great position. You're in a great enjoy this. Don't stress. It, it wasn't like the wish fairy came down and said, "Ah, oh, you get the one wish, and now you're done." Well, and you know, uh, now uh, you, you the, as 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 a bit of 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 uh, advice that I, I hope you would agree with. Um, uh, we also got a bit of a signal boost uh, that that we did not expect to see coming. Uh, in that, I reached out to uh, uh, Jack Resider of Darknet Diaries and uh, and said, "Hey, do you would you mind putting a trailer at the end of the thing?" And his response was, normally this is my week off. How about if I just run all of episode one? And it's like, Bleh. and so, I mean, that's tens of thousands of listens oh, yeah. to the entire thing. So so uh, uh, as Justin and I were talking about it, it's like, you, you don't know which of these scratch off lottery tickets is gonna end up uh, paying off. But but you do know that that if you, if you help enough people and you make enough friends that, that it, when you get to a, an inflection point like this, then the odds are pretty good. That's that, that, uh, what's the old saying? Uh, luck is where preparedness meets opportunity, you mm -hmm. know? Right. But I mean, there's, there's, that was a boost. That was a great boost. The biggest boost probably is going to be when you guys do something and Apple's going to feature it. Yeah. You know, that, that probably in podcasting, that's probably the number one <clears throat> signal boost. And maybe, cause I don't, I don't know how, I mean, I, I'm trying to imagine what would be a bigger boost. Like with books, it used to be the Oprah book club. That was the biggest boost. And then I think, I think the Amazon Prime Reads is the biggest signal boost in books. For podcasting, I don't know, but I would think maybe it's that Apple feature, this is our favorite thing, because yeah. I mean, that's part of the... That, that, I mean, the, the, the only bigger thing I can think of other than that is like you enter the news cycle, and for whatever reason, the next big thing in podcasting is on the top of some popular medium post, and, and like... It, the, but but and, and that's major breakout you know crossover crossover exposure uh why did why did like making a murderer become so popular because it was the media talking about the media the media got to talk about a media product there was way better i mean they're not knocking that that one but there was great stuff out there before but the media didn't want to cover that because that was outside of them when NPR produced this thing, you're like, well, those are for well, this will now, oh, podcasts have finally come of age. They find like, really? Really? This was this was well, I wonder what happened. Like, oh, your friends made this. Got it. And now it's a story. So yeah, the media boost can help a lot. So uh and it is a great podcast. And it tried started a trend. Don't want to knock it. But. Uh Bri Bri Bryce had a unique experience that that uh, you uh, feel free to talk about to whatever extent you think there's anything in interesting to say, but, but right. like, uh, uh, we, we, we were so secretive about this that, uh, I think we were working on episode three before Bryce even heard mm -hmm. a, a tickle of episode one or for, something like that. For months, this and, and other projects for, there were, there were months where Brian, where Brian would say, I gotta go record this thing. And I don't, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> um, I, I mean, that that was just definitely a weird thing because I feel like I I could be trusted. In <laughs> Normally, you know, involved. I could be trusted at least at least to know what's going on, so I know well, where you're running off to yeah. or whatever. But and let me correct myself. I meant serial, by the way, instead of making a murderer. Uh, but to the point, to serial. Sorry, serial. Thank you for correcting me in the chat. To, to to the secrecy point, though, Bryce, is that having those guys having that space to go do the thing and not have to talk about it or answer questions or what's going on with this because. Sometimes it's a very 
I, you know, Brian and Justin are weird dudes. And everybody involved with that. I mean, it's that, the, and, and the, the collaboration there, you know, it's like, you know, like heart to heart when they met, it was, you know, yeah. uh, explosion, whatever. But anyhow, point is, particularly, and only one member of these, this, this, this team, which I'm not going to name names, but this person is very, very, very sensitive of what he predicts will be criticism or notes giving him the space, not naming anybody here, <laughs> giving him the space to do the thing, mm -hmm. try it out, trust his partner in this, to trust the judgment of the other person and not let, not saying this other person sometimes out, outside influences, sometimes make him go around like a pachinko ball. Not saying this. No, and never say that about whoever here. this person is. It's like putting two people in a studio and just letting the band get their thing done. Get, yeah. And not 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 saying this person needs approval certain steps along the way. Not saying that. But to just have let that team get together, make it inside there, and then go out when it's time is a great, I think was a great formula. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and my comment was not to say I needed, I wanted to be involved. Like, But, 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 it, but, but just hearing that, like, that oh. that's not normally... Well, like, like it would be a, th it would be a thing where Brian would be like, oh, I gotta record World's Greatest Con. I'll see you in a bit. I'm like, what the fuck? What what is that? I don't even know <laughs> what. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, but it's uh, it's, uh, I I I'm you know, it, I think if you told me it took this long for Brian and Justin to do a new podcast together, I would beat the shocked pikachu face for all time like I, it's, well, it is it is it is kind of crazy that it's taken this long for you guys to do another thing together honestly but the great thing was like i think the magic is like it was just going into the studio and just getting the thing done i think that i can't emphasize how much it was just to not to do it without eyes on it was a really smart move yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um uh, anthony carboni had a had a, a great point in the chat um uh, the short version: You just make it good. You work your hardest, and every few things catches that wave. And and you know what? Like I, uh, so this is this is a two a two part thing. So there's a, a Twitter account that I really like following called at Fleets Good, and that is run by Lydia Burrell, who is also a, a tweeter. And what he does is, whenever he gets the, the feeling, he goes on like Facebook or whatever and finds all of these. Uh, he finds, uh, mm, uh, how would I call it? Bulk video. He finds bulk video that is made on the internet. Something that's stuff that's very popular gets seen a lot and not really good. Like you would watch it and like, oh, maybe a, a child maybe a child would like this because it's kind of simple, but but very uh, uh, what I think is low quality, high view content. And over the past week or so, I've been going back, uh, for whatever reason, I've been very reminiscent with with Scam Nation. I think because I'm doing less editing with it. But uh you know, going back and watching like we we put on a really great show right it's a, Tight. It, it is a fantastic it is tv quality it is better than tv quality material um and we <laughs> can i say something because like i would hear like time to like oh you know maybe we, we're talking to a production company talking to i'm like you are an effing production company <laughs> all the stuff you're doing is better than many of the production companies i've worked with and i was I, i've said told you this I'm, I'm glad you guys are really i'm like but, 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 no, but like, you, you guys are you, but, you, you but, also but, as a creator understand that blind spot that that you can't yeah. uh, uh, uh it's only after that it's done that you could that you could allow yourself yeah, to I'm, see you know i i but i mean i was arrogant i I created a production company because I, I got an office at Universal Studios in Orlando. I'm like, I'm a production company, and I didn't have what you had. They didn't have there was there was an office with a desk in it. You know, I didn't have the talent, the people doing this. And I think for you, it's that like it's that ah uh, somebody I need permission to call myself this. Well, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, 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 Bryce. Oh, but uh, 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 the, sorry. The 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 final nail in my point was. Uh, I, uh, like I mentioned, I'm doing a little less editing on Scam Nation, and so I think I have a little more distance where I can just sit back and like watch like for 20 or 30 minutes a bunch of old videos that we did, and they're great. And you get a new kind of objective perspective, but you kind of have to have some form of distance to get there. And I think right now, where because you know episode three just came out, there's going to be a fourth and a fifth episode, and so you probably have a couple more weeks of that of that process of adding some distance to view the view the show and its success a little more objectively um and kind of sort out in your own head what what expectations you want to set for yourself for you and justin on the next for the next season or the next story or the next whatever 
Uh, and uh, along that line, Andrew, um, one of the hardest things, because uh, and you and I have talked about this, where it's like the hardest thing is to give yourself permission to take yourself seriously. The the character as of of Ryan Brushwood as portrayed in World's Greatest Con, because there's really kind of three stories. There's the the individual forty minute story that we're telling as it ties into the four episode long con that's being done. But the ongoing thing will be this character of Brian Brushwood casually telling story after story of, well, I remember this time or like, like the very first thing I say is, uh, and I would want to punch my own face if I said it 10 years ago is there's a phrase in my line of work. You can't con an honest John, which, Ooh, what a punchable thing. Yeah. If, if I Webster's were... dictionary defines confidence man as, but, uh, but, but, but at the <laughs> age of 46, uh, and having been around the block, I felt no hesitation, just, you know, leaning back, half empty glass, you know, uh, it, uh, talking that way. Uh, that's a character that would have been an ill-fitting suit 15 years ago, but, but, but I feel like I could pull off now. I, I hear you. I had a, I had a uh, 10 years ago, I was in the office's Discovery Channel with my agent, and he knew that I wanted to do something for Discovery Channel. Just, oh, let me take you by and talk to talk to Wayne. We go talk to Wayne. He goes, hey, this Andrew, this, and this Wayne, whatever, you know, he's looking for Discovery Channel. He goes, too young. That was it. And they it know was what they want. Three years, three years later, three years later, hey, I want to do the same sharks. Perfect. And it was just that, you know, it was literally that, that was in Indian. And it was like, oh, okay, yeah, you, you will fit your, your, you're old, you're, you're old and still stupid. So that works at our advantage. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it, and, and I think that to some degree, like I never, it has never occurred to me in the entire time that I've listened to Dan Carlin on hardcore history, whenever he takes a quick side jag to remind you of his radio days and to explain a little bit about how drive time radio works and the type of people and how the suits would tell him to do this or that. I 100% have no doubt all of those stories are true. Uh, for, for me at the age of, 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 uh, uh happy birthday, Bryce, uh, 30, <laughs> 31, it'd be all like, okay, what do you, what do you, what do you been, uh, solo all of five years. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure you're a real expert in scams and cons kid, you know, <laughs> whereas, whereas, uh, with, with age comes this kind of, you know, authenticity that I think really matters for this particular project. When a lot of it is confidence. I mean, if you didn't feel, if you didn't feel like your values that you've just described, Ray, age and experience, uh, if you felt like you didn't meet that, then your recording would have been different. you like, you, may not have even done that type of persona or personality because you, you went for like, like confidence is so important with this. And, uh, uh, you, you, ex it turns out you're pretty good at exuding that <laughs> better, better now than I used to be. Uh, so, so, uh, Andrew, you, you said something that kind of blew my mind in that you said, yeah, your biggest push is the one that's going to come from Apple. And I realized it was, just now, as you said those words, that I realized, oh, each season we have a beginning and an end, and both are reasons uh, for uh, for us to reach out. And um, I'm going to guess that somebody at Apple is going to find it a little bit eyebrow raising that, you know, it's 600, <laughs> however many reviews that the average is five stars and it seems to be doing well. All of a sudden I'm realizing Oh yeah, that's that's no BS. That really can happen. That's 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 yeah. extraordinary. They, um, I mean, they're always. I'm sure they're always looking for something to put in that slot. So here's here's the thing. By the way, um, do you take me serious now? I I do. Or how about now? Oh! Clark Kent. Oh my goodness. Hello, hello. 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 Well, gentlemen, <laughs> let me explain to you how this works. <laughs> Ready for my TED talk? Okay. Yes. This guy you'd listen to talk about. This guy, nah, whatever. No. But anyhow, um, this is the thing I discovered. When you get like, you have an audience. You you already like a big part of what you're doing right now is reaching your exist. One, you got the boost from other people, but you have your audience and really adjacent audiences. So there's everybody who who likes the stuff you and Justin do. Then there's that people kind of around you. And that's why you're, you're going to get great reviews. When you get a big signal boost that puts you way outside of there, where some grandmother who like who's looking for you know podcasts on pudding or something finds it, 
You will find new fans, which is how you get growth. There's the chance that you're going to get, I saw this where I would have like my first, you know, my first several hundred reviews would be amazing, five star. Then when it got that really big boost and it went to a way, way wider audience, and it was pushed in front of people that I wouldn't think would like it, but I'd still get good. But I would notice it would kind of, I, I kind of regress to like, you know, between you know, like four and a half or somewhere around there. But that's, that's good because that means, oh, this is going to a wide audience. When you see it too perfect, you're like, Look at the fav- look at your favorite thing, <laughs> podcast or TV show or movie, and look what the reviews for it are. Uh, it's gonna go. It's yeah. It, as, as a matter of fact, the version I think of, uh, and by the way, uh, uh, Extracts Gaming, uh, welcome in the chat. Um, uh, uh, Extracts Gaming was just saying that they're a fan from uh, the the OG Scam School days. Uh, one of the things that we would look for in a Scam School release is I always took it as a bad thing when we had ninety nine percent thumbs up because that meant that the algorithm was only releasing to within our own bubble and it was not actually pushing yep. outside. So so likewise, for this moment, I'm enjoying five out of five stars <laughs> is a very fun well, on the should. new podcast. That's the proof you need. So, Correct. so the proof is that, you, like for me as a writer, when I put it out there and if the people who know my stuff before are giving me great reviews, then I know, okay, I did the thing, I did, I did the thing I was supposed to do. You know, and then figuring out, you know, how to make it grow beyond that is next steps, but it means taking bigger risk and stuff. But like, yeah, like, I think you're, when you get the, like, I, like I said, like you pointed out, the more you do this, the bigger the chance for signal, every book I do, and also every series, like I like, you know, I'm doing, I merged two series, and then I'm launching, I merged two series, I launched one series, and I might do another, I might do a third series, because I kind of like the point of having a new series to bring in a new audience. Uh, so yeah, well, and, and likewise, what I'm hoping for, um, I, I think there will be a bit of excitement over the next two weeks as we wrap up season one. Uh, we will have to privately figure out how fast we want to hustle on season two. We have we already have ideas for both season two and season three. I'm very excited about both of them. Um, how long the gap will be in between, I don't know, but I do know this much. I know that 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 uh, as as the very wise novelist uh, Andrew Main told me. Uh, nothing promotes your first book more than your second book and, and on and on and on and on. That's the best uh, thing you could do. Yeah. Like it's every new, every new vector, every new vector to reach new audience. Yeah. D- and doing stuff seasonal is very different from doing something every week. I mean, uh, like I wrapped up marbles season one a few months ago and I'm still like simmering right now, just doing it every other week. And, getting ready for the new thing opening up space to check out another thing and so you kind of need to see what you you might want to accomplish before season two is there are there format structural things are there technical things that might need some time to work out how is the writing process try out a longer or a shorter writing process um and you'll just kind of have to trial by fire on on that but i think as long as you don't pressure yourself into saying like we must immediately make this every week like like you're on the the seasonal path and uh stick stick with that because it's that is a little bit of less is more of where right it is a here is a box and we're building the box and the box is done now the box is out for everybody and it takes as long as it, it needs it, a big a big change too is one of the things is like the received the wisdom that we get from people is often informed by what made sense three or four years ago or five years as we hear like oh best to release your newsletter on tuesday what happens when everybody knows Tuesday? Another thing that was a big change in the last six or seven years was really the subscribe button. And the subscribe button means do it at your own pace. Don't worry. They're they're not like, oh, it's Wednesday. I better go to my computer and see if there's a new episode of Tiddly Weeks, you know? Right. No, it doesn't work that way. It means I'm feed. following you. Yeah. Right. Hey, it's been eight months since this guy put up a new video, but I know because I subscribed to the channel and isn't it awesome? Like Defunct Land's a great example of that. That was a show that like Kevin Perger does on his own damn sweet time. But when he produces something, you watch the views that gets like red letter media. You watch the views they get in the first 48 hours. That is not it going viral. That's all their subscribers going. Finally. Yeah. Uh, red letter media is also a really good uh, refutation of the mm, the the uh, the sweet hero <laughs> too many metaphors the sweet hero heroine of 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 um 
uh, uh, homogeneity. Like, like there's a temptation to say, well, this is what works. Keep doing the same thing. Every video must be a Plinkett video. Mm -hmm. But instead, they they introduce, they force fed all this cast of characters, this different type of show where they go watch old crap with review or where they just do these low fidelity Mike and Jay talk about or where they do half in the bag and then or other times these highly polished Plinkett videos. And uh, in the early days, it was wild because you could tell people really didn't like, they're like, I'm here for the one thing. Mm -hmm. But now they're, they, they, they've built at, out this cast and crew and now people are like, uh, yeah, I like all their stuff, they're great. Uh, and and that, is, that is a hard decision to make and I'm glad they made the right one. I have a, a weird piece of advice for somebody who's trying to do something in social media is take a medium, and use it the way you'd use another medium. And that could be like, I've seen some creators I know who are doing longer form videos will all of a sudden pop up a minute, a minute or two minutes. And they're using it like they would do TikTok. And part of it's because, oh, I made this content here. Let me put this there. There are some people on Twitter that will do these really long tweets now because it's easier to put them together. And it's like, oh, think think about like, how would you use YouTube like Twitter? If you put a, up, if you had a video up a couple times a day about something or whatever, you might have an audience that loves that. You know, and you might, and the same thing with Twitter, you might be like, oh, why don't I just do longer form reads on, on Twitter? It sounds contrarian, but. You see that a lot with, with, with news writers in that like, hey, sometimes people won't click the link in the article. So you kind of have to make a tweet thread that is about mm -hmm. most of the information. You're still yeah. getting reads, maybe not hits on the company website, but people are reading your work and that is adapting to people's behaviors. You know, it's one thing to say, I wish people would just click on the website more, but it's another thing to say, I'm just going to meet them where they are. And the people who will, will eke over a little by little will, or maybe not. And maybe that's just the way that news so, is delivered. I'm sure Twitter would love that. I don't think, I don't think I had the chance to tell you, Andrew, um, about the most extraordinary email I've ever sent on my email list. Did, did we talk about this yet? No. Uh, so uh, since, we're, since we're in the After Things Club and we tend to speak frankly about these things, um, I think I've mentioned before that I've got a number of different lists, but sort of the big list, uh, the one that I've been working on since the mid-90s, uh, has about 123,000 total names on it. Uh, Which is and, insane. Uh, 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 yes, I, it's it was even more insane until I imported it and uh, <laughs> and and Mailchimp were like, "Yeah, these fifty thousand are all garbage, and <laughs> just let me do you the favor of wiping these out." <laughs> but um, uh, I did two things that I think might be really really good advice. Number one, uh, uh, so took uh, the uh, 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 okay, so the campaign. Uh, I titled short message, Apple podcast, world's greatest con, 0% clicks, total clicks, total clicks are, uh, oh, 61 sent to 123,000 people. Six, 61 people clicked, clicked anything. Any, Not 61%, 61, 61 0, people. Just, <clears throat> okay. However, so the open rate. 51 percent 62,456 opens when it sent and the trick was i did not make anything a trackable link i told people the story i said if you care here's and i and i, I did not make it a clickable link because i knew that anybody who was using gmail or outlook or any client worth a damn was automatically going to take that HTTPS YouTube video and make it into a link. Now I won't be able to track it, but, but, but they could still get to it. Even if they don't get to it, they get the story. Then I did a resend to people who didn't open it and got another 30% open rate. So, uh, so in total, um, uh, uh, it's the biggest campaign ever at, uh, at 75,000 opens. Uh, and and uh, the headline was four words, uh, quick favor, it's important. And, uh, and it was plain English saying, hey, we got a thing. Right now, we're at this. Uh, time, minutes matter. Uh, if, if you want to go find it, go find it. And that's that. Which, which is tough with, with podcasts because everyone has a different app. There are different directories. People have 
different types of phones, different, sometimes they're not on their phone, sometimes they're on their computer. Like with, with podcasts, you kind of have to have a leap of faith of saying, this is what it's called. Please go find it. You will find it. Um, but there's not, there's not a way where uh, there are, there might be, there, there, there might be, but there's not really a thing that we all know about. That's like, this is the way the podcast that you can send people for your podcast and they will have all of the available links or, or what have you. You just have to say, Hey, Podcast listeners are technically are generally technically a little more advanced, so I need you to figure out how to search it yourself um, because there's kind of not a lot more you can do other than say it's the Apple Podcast app and hits the link because a lot of people don't like that. Which which does a few things. Number one, it makes it harder to to act like we're gaming any anything. <laughs> like literally, we're not we're not. It's like, like you're, I'm, but you're go, not. Go find it. Please. There's no there's <laughs> no acting. You're literally not. You're saying please listen to my thing. Right, and and it's also a, a good filter um, to to make sure that the the type of people who are going to go do something are the type of people who probably are really going to enjoy the show uh, because uh, what you don't want to do is force feed anyone anywhere. Uh, comment brought up RSS feeds. RSS feeds are great, but part of the reason you provide the links to those uh, podcast uh, portals is that that's how you everybody who clicks with the subscribe to there boosts the likelihood they'll be recommended to somebody else. Right. So it's that the crazy world of the algorithm. Yeah, like like I I use Overcast for podcasts, and I could have put the RSS link. It's got it has it it built in, and and it works fine. But I just wanted to type it in and have it have it be there like there's a certain amount of just it's a little activity but that little convenience it's the size of a sand grain but that will get people that will affect people's habits uh sign meter 54 wants to know if i mentioned why we made the separate email list for the podcast um because uh uh, uh i think legally you're su you were supposed to uh oh no no no. well i believe i believe uh, uh the fan list I get to say, hey, are you a fan of anything? I could, yeah. I could, I could share fan stuff to anyone who signed up for the fan list. Um, but, but I don't want to build a reputation of not being relevant to their interests. And if you take the time to sign up not once but twice, uh, uh, both for the general fan list and again for this specific project, then I could feel totally good about sending, hey, here's some funny outtakes. Also, episode three just dropped. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. And then, then uh, the the likelihood that anybody will be upset is is significantly reduced. Yeah. Sheldon, do we want to do picks? Um, uh, I'll do the reverse. I was saying Loki earlier. I'll say Rick and Morty now. <laughs> You're right. I it was, love it, that was <laughs> it was it was it was a fine return to form. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, I just mm -hmm. want just to I I want to spoil, but like part of what worked there was. Rick is godlike powers. Rick looks like kind of like Iron Man at the later stages of there's like Tony Stark basically is a magical guy can anything can have. When you put him in a situation where technology can't solve it, then it gets kind of interesting. And that's what I liked about it. Hmm. Because he had to, he had to uh, he had to solve it by um uh coming to an understanding with someone. <laughs> yes. Very cool. Uh uh you know what? I'm going to uh pick um uh for my pick i will pick uh i think it's controversial i think it's not it's definitely not the same thing uh that it was before which i'm sure we'll cover more on tonight uh but you know what i'm finding a certain amount of uh, uh of appreciation for hannibal season three which is is definitely a different thing it, it is really not trying to tell a story i don't think i think it's it's a lot of character portraits but i think it's very interesting uh, an interesting decision um and it's a short season three so um uh uh that yeah that'll, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to the conversation mainly because i, I want to hear the case for it because i'm 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 having a tough time with it and and the case is it's it's not the same show yeah and you and i don't like having to to, <laughs> to put it so bluntly but um that's uh, a fine way to put it, though. That's it's kind of where um, it's at. Uh, hey, a little birdie told me that VMix crashed. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to be looking at Brian for the rest of the uh, the show. Uh, Andrew, do you have a pick? I do have a pick. And by the way, the gentleman who wrote the episode of Rick and Morty last night is writing Ant-Man and Wasp and Quantumania. Ooh. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> I guess you're, when you're typecast for interdimensional stuff. Um, I, I finally broke down and I got myself the new iPad, uh, iPad Pro. I got the 11-inch. Um, I enjoy it a lot. The speed, everything else is noticeable from like I had the generation before. The 
pencil is amazing because you just it just clicks to the side and charges. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, there are a lot of great options out there. If you're a Microsoft person, you like Surface, if you just want a regular tablet, whatever, but if you're looking for, if you're gonna spend a lot of time on an iPad like I do, it's cool. And one of the things I like is if you just take the pencil and just start drawing it just right out of the bat, it just oh, starts cool. working and there's no buttons on. So anyhow, uh, I've been having fun with that. I use a the matte paper screen protector on it because I don't like that pencil on the super glossy surface. So mm. that's my pick. Here we go. Cool. It's been after. Ooh, alrighty. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yes, apology. I, I, I have to look at why that happened, okay. but uh, that's not a good day for that to happen. <laughs> Uh, we'll, okay, we'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, we, we got tech stuff, uh, so so I'm gonna go do homework for Cord Killers. But uh, man, what a great talk! Uh, uh, yeah. uh, that was a good one. Thank you everybody for hanging out. Very we're proud, very very proud of what you've done, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew. We'll be back in about two and a half hours with uh, Ayaz Akhtar, I believe, on Cord Killers this evening. Yeah. All right, everybody. Bye. Demio Rat King coming soon. Oh, soon, 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 soon. <laughs>